Whether you're nursing a sore head or not, the Bloody Mary's combination of salty, savory, spice, a little bit of sweet and acid is so Moorish. There are also many variations of this classic pick-me-up, so please comment below if there's one in particular you'd like us to tackle. The man usually credited with the Bloody Mary is Fernand Petiot, a French-born bartender at Harry's New York Bar in Paris. The story goes that the revolution in Russia had forced many Russians to flee, and they fled holding their bottles of vodka, introducing it wherever they ended up, including Paris. Fernand had been trying to figure out how to use this new spirit. Canned tomato juice was also a fairly new invention, and so in a stroke of mad genius, he combined the two with some added seasonings. There's also a claim from the comedian George Jessel, who says that he makes vodka and tomato juice in the kind of inspiration which only ever strikes when you're still awake at 8am after a night of hard drinking. What's most likely is that the combination of vodka and tomato juice existed, whether invented by Jessel or not, but Petiot was the one who spiced it up and put it on the map. We'll definitely have to do a deeper dive on this and the variations, like where the red snapper comes into it. So if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button and the little bell so you don't miss out when we do. It may have been invented in Paris, but the Bloody Mary is a very American drink. Petiot himself took it over to the States where it's been a firm favourite ever since. The recipes and garnishes have got bigger and wilder in a very American way and it's not uncommon to see ones garnished with burgers and all sorts nowadays. We're going to keep it nice and simple but I can't resist a little sherry twist. The citrus is really important here to balance out the tomato juice and to make it actually taste like a cocktail rather than just a soup. There are also some who argue that it needs a little bit of sweetness to balance it out. I kind of think there's enough in the tomato juice anyway, but those of you with a sweeter tooth might want to try a PX sherry instead of salty manzanilla. That's a really good variation. I'm just all about the salt the morning after the night before, so I keep mine really savory. But definitely try experimenting, even something like a little maple syrup. You'll only need about a bar spoon to be able to taste the difference. So first we're gonna squeeze some fresh lemon juice. And then we're going to go for some vodka. I'm using this Hellfire, which is a Tasmanian vodka made from potatoes. So it's quite savoury and has quite a lot of body, so obviously works really well in this cocktail. But really any nice clean vodka that you have is going to be perfect. 20 ml of Worcester sauce. This is pretty Worcester heavy, I'm not going to lie. That's how I like it. You're definitely welcome to, to knock it back a little bit. Also, I'm definitely cheating by just calling it Worcester sauce and not trying to say the whole thing. Worcestershire. 15 ml of lemon juice. Your seasonings, so a good pinch or a good grind of black pepper. These are all obviously kind of to taste. It just depends if you like things to be sort of strong flavored or not. I'm using celery salt, especially because I don't use celery as the actual garnish. It just adds that really nice kind of vegetal note. It's not necessary, normal salt's totally fine. It's just kind of like using celery in a, in a stock, like it just has that nice little backbone of flavor. Pinch of that. Six dashes of Tabasco or to taste. The way I usually deal with the Tabasco and spicy kind of thing is asking people how spicy they like their Bloody Mary on a scale of one to 10. And then however many they say, that's how many dashes I do. Um, so yeah, about five is kind of pretty medium spice and then anything up from that's gonna get a little bit spicier. You can obviously experiment with other hot sauces as well. I tend to like it about a six. And finally, your tomato juice. 90 ml of tomato juice. I'm gonna do a little olive for my garnish, so I'm gonna get that skewered before we start throwing this. And now we're just gonna fill this up with ice, but we're not gonna shake this cocktail as it will mess up the texture of the tomato juice and make it too thin and foamy. We're not gonna stir it though either, as it does need some aeration, otherwise the tomato juice stays too thick. Use your julep strainer, just sit it on top of the ice and make sure you're holding it in nice and firmly, and just pour into the other tin. You don't have to do it too much, you are obviously um, serving this on ice anyway, so it's gonna continue to dilute, so it's really just to get that nice little bit of aeration in there. But you can also keep it nice and slow and controlled. Do this back and forth about five times and it should be good to go. If this sounds a little bit scary or if you have cream carpets, then try sealing the tins as usual, but just gently rolling the tins around instead of shaking. Get your nice chilled glass out of the fridge or freezer, depending how bad you are, you can dab it on your uh, temples as well if you like. 
fill with ice and pour your bloody meaty in. Then just gonna grab your manzanilla and over the back of your spoon, just pour in just about five or 10 mils. Pop in whatever extra garnish you're going for. So I'm gonna do a little rosemary, a little bit of thyme. Make sure it's right up beside the straw so that you're gonna get all of those lovely fresh herbal aromas in your nose every time you go for a sip and hopefully it'll revitalize you. Pop in your olive because let's face it, you probably need a little salty snack at this point. The Bloody Mary. So now you know. Now obviously I have the straw in there and I am going to use that later but I do like my first sip to be directly through the little manzanilla float. Mm. I mean what's not to like? It just it feels like it's replenishing you like everything that you lost the night before you're getting back from the tomato juice and the little bit of spice, all the seasonings. I definitely don't think there's any point kind of holding back on the salt and the pepper and stuff in this. Like, it's it's meant to be a bit of an over the top drink and that's obviously why I have so much Worcester sauce in there. I think it's only ever, you know, it's something that you only ever have one of. I never really understand when people have heaps. It's kind of just like one and you're done. It's got you back to the place where you're meant to be. And it's probably my Irish heritage, but that potato vodka as well, so delicious. <laughs> 